channel. We've been really busy with all the goat kittings that have happened and we just attended two goat shows, one in Salem, Oregon, and then of course, Barn in the USA, our favorite show. We just attended that one as well. I will show you guys some clips from that show. The highlights were Mavis at the Salem show was best utter in her class. Um, she almost got first place and then the last minute, the judge switched first to second. That's okay, we know what we need to improve and we have brought in a new buck for that very reason. So we will introduce him very soon. In this class we had Lemon, shown by Amanda, and then we had Trudy with Jake. <laughs> 37 does in this class, so that is crazy. These usually make a cut to these large classes, so these are the does that have made it past the first cut. Judge is Cameron Jowalski. If you haven't had him at a show, you need to. He is hilarious. He is also the host of Goat Gab, the podcast. It was really exciting. Trudy was third in this huge class. about the Miss Toyer on Nigerian North class, starting with a doe who just excels the class in balance in all areas of the scorecard. She's certainly going to yield to the depth of body of the two does behind her, but she excels in the memory system. She has a great definition of medial. She has more appropriate placement on the other floor. She also excels too in dairy strength. She's leaner about the neck. She's sharper in her wither. She's cleaner and flatter in her bone pattern today. Four over five for dairy strength. The doe really just exemplifies the appropriate balance of um, substance of bone combined with flatness and angularity throughout. She is cleaner about her bone pattern, freer from excess washing today than the dough and five. She also has shells in general appearance as she travels around the nation with less tendency to broach in that loin, keeps that back just a little bit flatter and more level than five. Okay, this is our lineup for senior champion Nigerian dwarf. Um, I say it all the time that the Nigerian dwarf lineup is always one of the hardest because, you know, big breed, but we bring out a lot of quality in all those classes. So thank you guys for bringing them out. And hopefully I'll make a decision when I'm done talking about them. Um, I guess I have to, right? So at the end of the line, we have a really promising yearling milker, really attractive in her um, balance in the scorecard. That mammary system is really nice, and she has a very bright future ahead of her, um, really correct in her general appearance as well. Ahead of her, another doe who really uh, stand out, stands out for her general appearance, this two-year-old second freshening doe, correct on her feet and legs, straight um, on her foreleg, beautiful angulation to the rear leg and uh, matches that well with a well-balanced mammary system. Ahead of her, we have a three-year-old second freshening doe who really shows off when she gets out on the move. Really elegant, just a doe who you can see her will to milk and her productivity and that angularity and wedge shape and side profile. Uh, directly ahead of me, we have a four-year-old fourth freshening doe, um, another doe who fits quite nicely in here with the balanced mammary system, really attractive in her body capacity um, and her correctness in feet and legs as well. Ahead of her, we have a five-year-old fourth freshening doe, another doe who really shows off when she's out on the move, really strong on her feet and legs and a um, very well balanced mammary system as well really long and level over her top line too and at the head of the line we have a seven-year-old seventh freshening doe uh, really attractive in her rib shape and side profile um, a capacious and productive mammary system as well a doe who has really withstood the test of time and um like I said, this is one of the tougher rings for me, but like I do in every breed, I'm just gonna go with what my gut tells me to do. And when I look at this line, while she might not be the oldest doe in the lineup, um, 
I think that she's possibly one of the most well-balanced doe. She's really elegant and graceful as she gets out on the move, and that's our three-year-old doe, and she's going to be our senior champion Nigerian Thor. So we can bring her out of line and bring in the... But today I wanted to show you some clips from the shows we've attended and look at the does that we are retaining this year. Almost all the kids that were born have already gone to their new homes, except for two that are leaving soon and then the others are the ones we retained. So that's all we have left. And then Lula placed, I think fifth or sixth in all the rings. So she made the cut cause they were huge classes, like 40 goats in a class. And she was up there, so that was pretty good. Um, so we decided to retain a Mavis Doling this year. So this is Mavis and Drogo, which Drogo is a buck we retained last year out of Dottie and Braun. So we have Cat Moss is her registered name, and she is a pulled black and white doe with a little brown ear. The other doe we have retained is out of Trudy, and her name's Judy because she is Trudy and Justice. So we decided to name her Judy. And the last doe we retained was out of Sugar and Justice. And her name is Chantrilly Cake. So we don't know what we'll call her for short, but let me show you them. All right, so the black and white one is Cat Moss from Mavis and Drogo. And then we have Shuggies right here. And she's cold like sugar. And she's out of Sugar and Justice. And then we have Judy. Judy scratched her eye and had an eye infection. So we were treating that, but it's looking a lot better. And then this is Lemon Stoling who is sold and will be leaving soon. This is the bunch you will be left with. Let me show you her little brown spot on her ear. So she has the spotted nose, which is something Dottie passes to her kids usually. And Drogo has the spotted nose, so Drogo passed it on to her. So she has some white on her nose, and then she has a brown ear, which is interesting. Let's see. Let's see that? Huh, on her ear? You got an ear stain. That's yeah, just like a brown spot. We have Barn in the USA. We showed our bucks on Friday night and we had our new buck Yogi who we have not formally introduced yet but we will soon. And we also brought Drogo. So bucks are really fun to show and especially the ones that don't walk like ours. But in our area, bucks are becoming way more popular to show. This class was huge and we were second. So for milkers, we only had Dottie. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that Mavis actually hurt her leg and did not show. We're at Barn in the USA Goat Show. We're about to have lunch. And we're having rats. Mavis has hurt her leg. So she had to be scratched, but Dottie has been doing good and our bucks did really good. So Drogo and Yogi did really good. Did you say yeah, I'm just in time for lunch. That's what I like to, that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's been pretty good. So got the, got the bucks going. It was really exciting to see Yogi and Drogi out there to kind of see uh, where they placed because sometimes when you look at your own bucks you always think they look amazing you know you always see your own goats and but when you get them out here and you're with other 
competitive goats, you can really kind of get an idea of where you stand and and what you're looking to change in your herd. So that's really the, the cool thing about coming to the shows is seeing some of the other goats, some of the other breeds, seeing your goats up against them so that you can see what you need to work on. Uh, so it's really informative. And then Yogi and Drogi were consistently top three, top three second, the last one. yeah, second or third, um, which is which is good. So and it was really cold, so they, and were, they weren't walking, and they were not walking at all. Um, and it was really difficult when they don't walk. It's really difficult for the judge to gauge their confirmation and their what they look like because they're jumping around and, and just not walking with their feet like they normally would um, so it's really difficult to get a good placing so I think we did really well with our placings considering they didn't walk very well um, so the judge was able to just see them enough standing and not on the move so we're going to have place to go for a tremendous amount of width for that rear rudder. This for the width of the rear rudder, for the extension of the fore rudder, the three is placing over four to go. Four in her turn, placing over five. Just, I, this is a doe that just has such a dairy frame on this doe. She's wedge shaped, she's open. Uh, there's sort of that sharpness about her that she's placing her doe behind her with that height and with the rear rudder. She gets some of her balance and four placing over five. So we only brought a few goats to barn in the USA. We brought two bucks, our new buck and Drogo, which they did very well. There was like 45 bucks at that show. It was crazy. So quite a few bucks and they were second place in, I think they were definitely top five. Second place was their highest. So that was really good. I love the comments from the judges about their uh, dairiness and wedge shaped, especially with Drogo. I think Drogo looked really good. And then Mavis ended up hurting her leg in the trailer. So we had to scratch her, which was really unfortunate because it was a specialty show, which means they had special metal, like neck medals awards from ANDDA. So there was special awards for like best udder and things like that. And Mavis Probably would have been a contender for one of those. But you have to do what's best for your goat. There's no way she could walk around the ring with her leg hurting. By the time we got home, she was fine, so that was good. And then we brought Dottie. We're trying to get her her final grand champion win to be a permanent champion. Um, I think her best placing, though, was fourth place in one of the rings. In one of the rings, she was dismissed, so she didn't make the cut. The other ring, she was like eighth, so she made the first cut. And then the other ring, she was fourth, which was pretty good. Um, we, the thing with Dottie is she needs a very long fill time because she has such a capacious udder. And this year we did a little something different with raising the baby goats. We always dam raise normally. And this year we decided to bottle feed and, um, yeah, it's just, it just didn't work for us. So the udders are not as capacious and take way longer to fill in our experience. And it was way too much work. It sounded really fun at first and then it just became all too consuming and it's just something we're not gonna do again. So damn raising it is. 